Hi, this is Jeff from Hybrid Automotive. I want to show you today how to upgrade a Prolong Pro battery discharger that is not Thunderbolt compatible, meaning it's got software versions one or two in it to be compatible with the new Prolong Pro Thunderbolt system. So to do that, you're gonna need a number one Phillips screwdriver. You're also gonna need the upgrade board that's included when you bought the Thunderbolt upgrade package and your discharger. So this process is fairly advanced. So if you are uncomfortable doing it, uh, we do have an exchange program where for just the cost of shipping, you can send us back your discharger and we'll send you another unit that's already been upgraded. So if you watch this video and you decide that it's more than you wanna take on, uh, no problem, give us a call. We can do an upgrade exchange for you and send you a system where the work has already been done. So to go ahead and do the upgrade, uh, the process is as follows. The first thing you're gonna do is remove the screws on the top lid of your discharger. In this case, I've already done that. So I can just lift this lid out of the way and go ahead and set that aside. Then we need to remove the side and base cover, which is this piece that goes around the back and up to the sides. In order to do that, we have to remove the anti-tension ring on the AC power cord. So in this case, it's already been removed, but you're gonna have this anti-tension ring. This holds the clamps down on the power cord and just make sure it can't be yanked out. So we're gonna remove that and then test that by just sliding that cord, pushing it in a little bit like that and making sure that now it can slide. Uh, the red harness is fine. Don't need to do anything with that. So to remove this lid, there's two screws on the top. I'm using a power screwdriver, but just a regular screwdriver will work just fine. So there's two here on the 45 degree front surface. They just kind of unscrew just like that. Then on the bottom of the unit, this one they've already been removed, so it's a little bit loose, but uh, you're gonna have screws that run across this edge, down the back, and across the bottom edge here. So once you remove those screws, then your kind of side back cover piece is gonna be loose, and you can slide it back about 12 inches. You're not gonna fully remove it. We just need to get it back enough to have access in this area to get underneath the main circuit board, which is where we're gonna do the replacement. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and start to slide this back. Again, feeding that AC power cord in to make sure we have enough slack there. And you're gonna get it back far enough that this front corner is about even with the fans. That's far enough, then there's gonna be, there's a second wire harness back here, that's gonna get a little bit of tight, so you can't go any further, that's okay. We just need to get access into this area. So I've got here as a kind of a prop, if you will, a uh, board, the main board that's permanently installed in the unit, that's gonna remain there. And I wanted to show you here on the back where the Arduino board that you're gonna be removing is located and how the new board's gonna be installed. So this is really important because some of these boards have two large white resistors here uh, and some do not. If your board does, the way to know if you're gonna have that is if your software starts with a one, 1.x, you're not gonna have these. If your software starts with a two, 2.21, something like that, your system is gonna have these. And what we're gonna need to do in there after we move the, uh, remove the Arduino board is to bend one of these down like this. And that's just to make sure that there's enough room for the new board that we're gonna be installing, the replacement board. So this is located in there like that. So the first thing we need to do before we, before we actually bend that down, before we remove the old board, is we're gonna remove this 12 volt power supply that's right inside the unit. So in order to do that, we're gonna put the unit on its side with the side cover, again, still kind of back and out of the way. And we're gonna remove these four screws and then unplug and lift this power supply out of the unit. 
I like to unplug the blue and yellow wires here on the top first to get that one done. And then I can hold on to the unit while removing the power, hold on to the power supply while removing these four screws. Then I can lift the power supply out and when it's almost all the way out, we're able to unplug the second connector from the inside of the power supply. So that's the 12 volt power supply. Now we can set that aside temporarily. And now we have access underneath the circuit board to get to the bottom of the board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach in there and we're gonna remove the Arduino, which is the old software board. Very carefully, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, so you have to work your fingers in there. Just trying to do it without bending any of the headers on the board. And there we go. So this will be the old software board. And uh, after you've completed the upgrade and verified that your system is working, you'll be able to discard this. So let me show you on this uh, circuit board that's not installed what exactly I did. So I'm gonna reinstall it here. There we go. So this is what it looks like in there right now. And what I did is I reached in there, kind of grabbed it like this, and just lifted this guy off. That's how we remove this. Before you install the new board into your discharger, there's one thing to verify. On the new board, there's three tall pins that you can see here. These should be removed by us at the factory, but just in case, go ahead and check and see. If they're not removed, you wanna just cut them off flush like so. These are used for a one-time programming that's already happened, and so you're not gonna need them anymore, but they do potentially uh, conflict with that 12 volt power supply in the discharger. So just make sure they're cut off or trimmed down before you insert this board into your discharger. To install the new board, it's simply a matter of reversing the process and plugging it in. Again, if you have these two white resistors, you'll need to fold the top one down to grant that clearance. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in. Now that part of the process can be a little bit tricky, making sure that we align the pins correctly on the new system. The way that you can see to make sure that you're doing it correctly is by looking between this first, second, third, between the second and third power supply, you can see this first pin here on the bottom of the circuit board. That's the pin that we're gonna to use to align. So on our new board, that's gonna be this top corner or first pin. So you can look in, a light helps, you can slide a light into the unit you can look in between these two as you're plugging this in and make sure that you line up that one corner pin and then from there you can get the rest of the pins in the correct orientation and then you can push on this board from underneath install it and then check with a light to make sure it's fully installed that there's not a gap that could cause some of the pins to not be working uh, it's not have a good contact, I should say. And there you go. So I've just installed it correctly on a board that's not installed, so a little bit easier, but just kind of to visualize what you're going to be doing. Now I'm going to install it into this system following the same process. So I'll just unplug it from this extra board. And here we go. I'm gonna lower this in. Uh, this is where a flashlight could be pretty handy to kind of light up the internals of the system. And I'm gonna look through that gap. I'm gonna make sure all the wires are out of the way. Tuck it under any, any loose wires in there. I'm gonna move the fan power cables out of the way that are kind of in between those two power supplies. There's a bunch of red and black, real small red and black wires. Those are the fans, the cooling fans. So you can kind of just bend those wires out of the way so that you can see in. And then I'm gonna line it up on that pin. This does take a little bit of time. 
to get it just right. And there we go. So now it's lined up. So what we can do to test the installation is we can leave the unit kind of on its side like this, just reinstall only the power supply kind of temporarily, and then power the unit on to make sure it boots up and we get the proper, the proper display. So that's what we're gonna do next. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in the second connector, the one that's kind of down here on the inside. And then I'll plug in the first connector here on the top. And then I'm just gonna put just two screws for now in case we, we didn't get that pin aligned just right. We have that a quick and easy way to take it back apart. Just trying to hold it in there for now so we don't short, have any issues. Make sure there's no wires that have gotten jammed into the fans. Make sure the rest of the wiring looks good. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and power it on, check the screen. When it first boots up, it will come up in Thunderbolt mode. And that will tell you, it'll say Thunderbolt mode, Bluetooth disconnected, and that tells you that it successfully was installed, the pins are all aligned, and you're ready. So at that point, we'll power it off, go ahead and unplug it, and we'll go ahead and finish installing this 12 volt power supply. There's my missing screw. Then we can set the unit down and begin the case, the enclosure process. So we'll bring the rear and side piece back together. We're gonna turn the unit upside down, reinstall all the screws on the bottom, around the bottom and up the sides. So I'm not gonna do that on this one, but it's simple to do. We'll come to the front of the unit We'll reinstall the two screws here on the front diagonal locations. And then finally, reinstall the lid to complete the upgrade. Again, if after watching this process that you decide that that's more than you wanna take on yourself, go ahead and give us a call and we can arrange an exchange upgrade for you instead. Thank you very much.